Hi, and welcome to JD's Long Box. I'm your host, JD. For this review, we're taking a look at Don Pendleton's The Executioner series, originally published by Pinnacle Books and then bought by the Gold Eagle imprint of Harlequin Books. I was first introduced to Mac Bullen in the pages of Rogue Force, which I had actually picked up for the inclusion of Phoenix Force, a spin off series that I was already familiar with. The book came with a mail in subscription form to receive monthly books. The deal was you get four books as a free trial, and then you would get charged after that for each monthly shipment. My first shipment included The Executioner number 146, Deadly Tactics, and number 147, Payback Game, the longer format Mac Bullen Backlash, and also included the unrelated Soldiers of War number 1, Blood and Glory. It was from that standalone adventure of Payback Game that really captivated me, and made me a lifelong fan of the one-man specialist against armies of bad guys. Each book was like an action movie of the day. The origin of the character goes all the way back to the Vietnam War, where Special Forces sniper Mac Bowen earned the nickname The Executioner for his 90 confirmed kills of high-ranking NVA officers. Book number one, War Against the Mafia, published in 1969, opens when Bowen was granted emergency leave to return to his home in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, to bury his parents and his kid sister Cindy, who were killed after a Mafia loan scheme caught up with them. His younger brother Johnny, though wounded, was the only survivor. Disgusted by the violence happening at home in American cities, Bowen went AWOL and acquired a Marlin 444 rifle to exact his revenge. Putting his special forces training to use, the executioner took out the local mob with sneak attacks, going undercover in their ranks, and a direct assault on the Don's compound. After the first book, Bowen adopts his War Everlasting to hunt down the predators that prey on society. He traveled from city to city within the United States and around the world in his personal war against the Mafia. Federal agent Hal Bragnola stayed on his trail until Bowen was finally captured for the crimes he committed in his quest for justice. He was offered a choice, life in prison, or come work for the U.S. government to hunt down terrorists. Working from the secluded Stony Man Farm in rural Virginia as their base of operations, Bowen and his team of operatives took on the larger threat of global terrorism. But the Stony Man Farm was infiltrated by the KGB, and among the casualties was Bowen's love, April Rose. Vowing to never let anyone close to him become a target again, Bullen canceled his arrangement with the U.S. government and offered them an arm's length deal. If they found him targets and stayed out of his way, he would hunt down the terrorists, warlords, drug traffickers, and anyone else that threatened the civilized world. This covert operative era takes up the bulk of the Executioner's publication, and this is where I started reading. So for me, Mac Bullen will always be more of a James Bond, Ethan Hunt type super agent than his soldier turned vigilante against the mob origin. Written at about a ninth grade level, they're easy to read comfort food with simple action movie plot lines that usually follow the Executioner's hit and run assaults used to gain information and stir up the enemy so the Kingpin will reveal himself and draw his remaining forces close to him. This provides a target rich environment for the Executioner to showcase his namesake before ending in a final showdown with the main boss. But don't think that it's all just blood and guts and revenge. Bowen's other nickname from his Vietnam days was Sergeant Mercy because of his compassion for his fellow soldiers and the civilians they fought to protect. Much like Ethan Hunt in the newest Mission Impossible movies, Bowen's motivation isn't so much revenge but an insistence to protect as many lives as possible. He never fires on police even if his own capture or life is at stake, and he's vowed to never let a civilian come to harm through his actions. Bowen's personal mission is always to put himself at the tip of the spear to protect the lives of everyone behind him. With the exception of a few three-part miniseries here or there, the books are episodic, so any book can be a jumping on point, and it's up to the reader to decide what's canon. With a 50-plus year career, and after being shot, stabbed, and concussed an unknown number of times, it's hard to believe that even the toughest human could keep going. Even his Vietnam War origin has been ignored in the later books, instead referring to Bowen as being forged in the fires of war. While author Don Pendleton wrote 37 of the first 38 books, after he sold the rights of the character to Gold Eagle, there have been at least 68 different ghostwriters that have continued the legacy, and Mac Bowen has appeared in no less than 650 books. He's also had a few brief runs in comic books, first from Innovation Comics in Mac Bowen and the Executioner, and then in The Executioner, The Devil's Tools from IDW. A feature film has yet to be produced, even though the film rights have changed hands almost as long as the character's been in print. Currently, the rights are with Shane Salerno, with Bradley Cooper cast to play the title role. I think the casting choice is excellent, but after Cooper's portrayal of real-life American sniper Chris Kyle, I'm not sure that he would want to play the Executioner. If Cooper steps down, or if the rights change hands again, I would suggest Henry Cavill as a potential choice. Mac Bone has been the inspiration for countless more well-known action heroes, the most obvious being Marvel Comics' The Punisher, which shares a very similar origin, look, and modus operandi. 
With the movie rights at one time belonging to Sylvester Stallone, it's quite likely that the later Rambo films and his Expendable series draws from The Executioner. The paperback novel to screen heroes like Jason Bourne, Jack Reacher, James Reese, and fellow Vietnam vet and sniper Bob Lee Swagger, best known from the shooter film and TV series, fit a similar mold to Mac Bowen. I've even heard it suggested that the A-Team was inspired by the spin-off series Able Team that debuted in The Executioner No. 2, Death Squad. And I have no doubt that the newest wave of hard-hitting action heroes like Tyler Rake and John Wick owe a little thanks to The Executioner. If you want me to give a more in-depth review of the individual books, let me know in the comments. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, I'm JD, and this box is closed.